He's one of our favorites, one of the great writers in America. He's Wright Thompson, ESPN.com senior writer. And uh, saw where he spent some time with Caitlin Clark. Wright, always great to see you. Give me the game plan when you go in. I have a game plan when I do an interview. <clears throat> You're going to do an article on Caitlin Clark. What was your game plan when you uh, went there? I mean, uh, it's almost sort of the opposite of doing an interview, I think, probably. Like, I didn't want a game plan because I didn't want to bring any of my own stuff. Uh, I just, you know, I wanted to go and have it be a letter from a time and a place. It seemed like it was going to be a mania. And so I just sort of thought, I just need to be in Iowa City as much as I can, talk to as many people in Iowa City and, be, you know, everybody I can find that's ever known her and just sort of let the story come to you. I mean, I don't know. You hear coaches talk about that, but you know, I, I didn't know what I was going to find. And I certainly didn't want to project anything onto her. What's it like to be a fly on the wall and just observe and just listen? Well, I mean, one, it's just inherently weird. Do you know what I mean? It's just (laughs) like, a, you know, I mean, like, they tell you to be a fly on the wall, but like, if you're just sitting in the corner writing down, I mean, that's a super creeper vibe, you know? So it, it, it's much more like trying to figure out how to match the energy in the room. So like the athletes are different, you know, like uh, Michael Jordan likes to give it to you, but he can take it. Jack Nicholas likes to give it to you, but really can't take it. And like, you know, everybody's different. And so you just got to find the energy and try to match it and, become part of the furniture, I think. If you didn't know she was a superstar, would you have gathered any of that by just being around her, the way she carries herself or what she says, or uh, obviously with what people say about her, but just her personality? Uh, Dan, 100%. I mean, we've both, I mean, you've talked to way more great athletes than I have, but we've both sort of been around a lot. I don't know if I've seen maybe a handful of people who were as thoughtful as she was about what was happening to her. I mean, she is a woman in full, I don't know the right way to say it, but like she is 22 years old and is operating on a, like a really sophisticated wavelength about what's happening to her and how to manage it. And like, she is self-aware enough to sort of know her flaws and demon. I don't know. Like I, I found her to be shockingly thoughtful and, uh, you know, not normal, uh, but like someone who is actively engaged in trying to figure out what in the hell is going on. Because it's crazy. And it feels crazy in it. The importance of this taking place in Iowa as opposed to South Bend if she had gone to Notre Dame. You know, I thought a lot about that. Like before I, you talked about what what was my game plan, you know, the – I wrote about Dan Gable uh, maybe a decade ago and that Iowa was very much a character in that story. And I just sort of thought it would be here too. Uh, One of the things, you know, Caitlin didn't grow up on a farm. You know, she's a suburban kid who went to a big Catholic high school. She could be from any suburb in America. It could be West Des Moines. It could be Olathe, Kansas. It could be South Haven, Mississippi. You know, it, uh, so I, I don't know exactly how to say it, but I feel like she's the only citizen from the country of Caitlin. You know what I mean? Like she's, she's from her own talent more than she is. Population one. Population one. And, but what is interesting is she's definitely the most popular person in Iowa. Like last night or the other night, Tim McGraw comes out on stage in Des Moines wearing a Caitlin Clark Jersey. I mean, it's bananas right now, Dan. I mean, it's, you know, it is, Every now and then there's a college athlete who comes along who does this, whether it's Steve McNair or Marcus Dupree or Steph Curry at Davidson, where everybody just has to stop and watch. It's like it's a folk hero thing, it feels like. How do you explain her if somebody did not know what she played like or who she was? I mean, Kobe Bryant with a ponytail. (laughs) I mean, like, seriously, like Apex Predator, you know, like all the stuff we hear about you know, the Michael Jordan last dance thing. Oh, and I took it personal. I mean, there's that, you know, her brother used that exact phrase when describing her to me, you know, one of her superpowers is she really takes things personally. You know, there's just a lot of that energy. 
And uh, when you get through the symbolic importance of her success and what she's doing for the woman's game, and I mean, understandably and rightfully so, a lot of the conversation is about that. But she also is a great basketball player who wants to steal your soul, you know? Well, you profiled Jordan. You know, is it a stretch to see sort of similar characteristics? Not a stretch at all. And I mean, Jordan's on the other end of it. And uh, Jordan's fame is hers 100x, you know, but I sort of feel like, you know, terminal velocity, you can only fall so fast. So on a certain level, famous is just famous, you know, and it doesn't really matter. Uh, But no, I mean, the mindset, the dreams, the focus, the uh, way in which parts of herself are probably a mystery to herself. I don't know. I find there are a lot of similarities. I, mean, I was surprised by that. Do you know what I mean? I don't know why I was, but like, you know, she's much more she's much more fully formed than most college athletes I get sent to write about. But now she has a team around her. So she plays for a team, but she has a team that is PR, family, like she's a professional athlete. Yes, absolutely. How has that I mean, affected it, like is if I looked at 18-year-old Caitlin Clark, now I look at 22-year-old Caitlin Clark, what's the biggest difference that you would see? I think that she hasn't let that, I don't think there's a lot of difference. I think she's a more polished version of herself, but I think, you know, I think there are two arcs going on here. There's the public thing that they are managing incredibly well. I mean, she's got an incredibly sophisticated team of agents and and money people. And, you know, her parents are truly incredible. I mean, I got to know Brent and Ann and, you know, any kid who ha- any parent who has a superstar athlete needs to try to find out how to talk to Brent and Ann Clark about what to do because they have managed this about as well as it can be managed. But no, I, I think that they are. I think that you know that's the public arc, but the private arc is, is she's trying to become the best basketball player she can be and figure out how to harness her talents and not let them sort of make her burn up. Uh, so. I, I think she's remained remarkably focused at the center of all of this. You know, peace in the quest is kind of her mantra. And it she's doing a good job. She does a better job of living that than I do. You know, I mean, I we all want that. But I think she's doing a really good job of it. He's right. Thompson, ESPN.com senior writer's profile of Caitlin Clark. She seemed to relax a little bit. and and Or you allowed her to kind of relax and just be a person. Uh, did you get that sense of, oh, wow, okay, now she's allowing me in a conversation or I'm listening to a conversation maybe that I wouldn't normally be privy to or any any real ticks that are in her yeah. personality? I, I felt like, uh, you know, the, and so you talked about her professional team around her. I mean, yes, she has that. But I also felt like, one, she was vulnerable, which requires an incredible amount of confidence, you know, to talk to a stranger about how you're actually feeling. I mean, I I walked away from that thinking that is a really confident 21 year old who is like, knows herself and is like comfortable talking about it and comfortable thinking out loud, wasn't nervous, wasn't scared, wasn't umming and eyeing, was just, you know, I mean, I I, I was a little blown away by it. I mean, I walked out and was sort of like shaking my head you know, I always call my wife after an interview because she's always, I mean, I'm checking in at home and she's like, how did that go? And I, I sort of was like, I mean, incredibly well, I think. I just was sort of blown away by uh, how, I was blown away by how she was handling the mania. Because like I said, it, it it feels like a mania when you're around. Just to, you know, she's carrying this, carrying this sport. But I'm curious, we learn more about when we lose. When, when something goes wrong, she lost the yep. national title game, uh, got humbled there. You know, I learn more about an athlete if a quarterback throws a pick six than I do when he throws a touchdown. Like, what do you do next? What did Caitlin, do you think, learn from losing that national title? I think a couple of things. One, that she was so on the game before against South Carolina that I think great athletes find these sort of fugue states and – are moving them where everything, you know, they talk about it slowing down. They talk about being in like rhythmic and train mode or flow state. I think she had been her best self on the biggest of stages. And so wanted that again, you know, it's a drug, like you, you feel it once and you want it again. So I think wanted to go back. 
I think, two, there was a very adult understanding that it didn't end the way they wanted, but the ending, to quote the West Wing, isn't the measure of the experience. That, like, a group of people who loved each other did something very special together that will only mean more to them the older they get. And so I got the sense that even in the middle of the heartbreak, there was an understanding that, like, we did something together that will only mean more to us as we get older and older and further and further away from the tears of that locker room. And Caitlin is first generation NIL. Uh, any jealousies that you sensed with the, uh, between her and her teammates? I didn't, that doesn't mean they don't exist. Do you know what I mean? Like, like uh, I don't want to claim to be clairvoyant or anything, but I, I know from her perspective, you know, she's tr- sharing the wealth as, as much as she can. And, you know, she, she gives really great gifts. Like they all have the coolest Nike shoes I've ever seen, you know? And like, I mean, she, I think she's doing a, a good job of trying to sort of be generous and understand that there is the potential for that. You know, I think being aware of it is probably the most important thing. I think you only really get in trouble with that is if you're just totally dumb and tone deaf. You had the story about the yacht that uh, she rented. The managers, uh, head manager, Will, because, uh, you know, the managers are also their practice opponents. And so they're all really tight. It's this sort of little group of people who always, they all live together and hang out. And, uh, you know, so they were in Croatia and uh, they went and got a yacht. I mean, the way I described it was like a yacht where you like might see Pat Riley drinking a mojito or Jay-Z. You know, <laughs> like they they were out in the blue waters, man, having a good time. And Caitlin's uh, picking up the bill. Well, I think my understanding is that uh, the way it was described to me is that everyone chipped in. I don't know if that's so. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, Caitlin's pockets are deeper than uh, than uh, the, everyone else's pockets. But I just think it was like, you know, they'd been through a storm. I think they also knew, like, what was coming, you know? Uh, and so it was nice to be a team together and have nobody give a crap who they were, you know, I mean, it was, I think, I think that's the deal. Like you get inside that fishbowl, you know, a few hours outside of it have long lasting ripple of positive ripple effects. How does the WNBA maximize Caitlin Clark? That's a great question. I don't know the answer. I mean, I think roll the balls out, you know, I mean, I think the thing with her is that this isn't marketing. I mean, the only thing her marketing people could do is get too clever and screw it up. Like, you know, if I'm her agents, I'm just like, we just need to let her be her because that's the thing that people are responding to. And the more you try to spin it or gloss it or do something to it, we see this all the time, like really dynamic athletes who are utterly destroyed by their professional help, you know, And like, I just think you let her be her and let the fans respond to it because they're responding to athletic greatness. They're responding to the desire to be great. It's clear. And, you know, I don't think this is, doesn't feel to me like a media creation. You know, it feels like something that, that Americans are having an actual emotional response to what she's doing on a basketball court. I always wondered because you do such great profiles and deep dives, but, have you found a coach or a player who welcomed you kind of telling them about themselves? I, I mean, in, in my deepest, you know, most secret places, I hope so. Uh, but, you know, I think it's a weird thing done to you. You know what I mean? And the older I get, the more aware I am of that, 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 I don't think I'd want anybody doing this to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, but and you like, you you went deep with Pat Riley. I'm curious if Pat Riley cared that you went. Like, oh, he learned about oh, himself. Oh, you know what's really interesting about Pat, and also you want to like a, a insight into why he's great is like I did. I went deep on Pat, and we really talked about. You know, he was very open and honest, and is one of the few people I've written about that I stay in touch with. Uh, but he wrote me after the story came out and was basically like, man, you took me to the bone, but I really appreciate that was his direct quote. Uh, so my heart started beating a little faster. Look at the text message. But like he said, I appreciate that you didn't bring in anybody else. 
Like I didn't talk about his fam. Like, do you know what I mean? Like I, I, I was talking about him and I didn't, there was no collateral damage, you know? And uh, so he was a grown up and a pro and he was just like, I appreciate that. Like I'm fair game. I'm Pat Riley. I get it. Uh, but you didn't, you know, you didn't go after civilians, if that makes any sense. I don't know the right way to say it, but he was super grown up, which is also like such a sign of confidence. I mean, one of the things that I wish readers and viewers and sports fans could see is the reaction after a story runs often tells you as much about the person as the story. Because like some people are incredibly secure and some people are incredibly insecure. And it's just interesting because you see both and... I've learned to never guess the reaction. Like I didn't know what Caitlin's reaction was going to like. I just, yeah, yeah, I never ever assume. Great to talk to you. Hope the family's good. And uh, thanks for joining us. Man, everybody's great, Dan. It's always a pleasure. Hope you guys are doing well up there. That's right. Thompson ESPN.com senior writer. And you can read his profile of Caitlin Clark at ESPN.com.